1 verse 3. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Just imagine how it was on Friday, the desperation that was there, the apostles running away because they knew after Jesus, those people will be coming to them. There was desperation, but on Easter Sunday or uh, Easter Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So wherever there is a good Friday, there is always an Easter Sunday. And that's why we are here to tell you, happy Easter. Jesus Christ, the resurrected one, came and is giving us hope that there is life after death. Welcome, brothers, into the studio. Thank you so much. And I ask you, please, to lead us in a word of prayer. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you above all for having died for, for sins. We thank you because you've been a source of hope, you've been a source of consolation, and you've been a source of love for each and every one of us. We ask you to bless us all, and also ask your spirit to be with us in this session, as we're going to share our experiences, the people of God, that it may be for the goodness of the preaching of your word, Lord. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, brother. Dear viewer, the people in the studio, the congregation is, is not new. They are celebrating 50 years of their existence in Kenya, the Komboni missionaries. And today, we are blessed to have Komboni brothers. Komboni brothers. So, they are coming to tell us uh, that bit of, you know, we know Komboni fathers, so it is good for you also to understand that there is Komboni uh, brothers and what do they do. But before we do that, let me allow my guests to introduce themselves, their names. We know they are Kombonis. We know up to now, we know the story of the Komboni. They have been coming here every month. So, lazima unawajua. But the brothers in the studio, I know you do not know what their names are. So I give them this chance to introduce themselves. And I begin from my left. Please introduce yourself. Okay, thank you, sister. I'm um, Brother Gislet Dagbito from Benin. And this is my third year in Komboni Brother Center, the last stage of our formation as Komboni Brother. Okay. okay, welcome. The thank name you. is James Ling or James A. <laughs> they are from a, a, a French-speaking country, so you'll have to understand that uh, their pronunciation is different from mm -hmm. what they are used to as far as English is concerned. And on my right... Well, uh, thank you, sister. I'm James, brother James Okongo, and I come from South Sudan. Uh, I'm a first year in our house of formation, mm -hmm. of course, our last stage of formation. So I'm still in my first year of formation. You are welcome. Thank you so when much. When you say Okongo, somebody will might think you are from Kisi. <laughs> so there are Okongos in South Sudan. Sure. So uh, I, th I know one time there is a person who was saying, bring us the brothers. We want to know more about the brothers. And uh, maybe there are some people who didn't know about the the presence of Komboni brothers. Some may know, some may not know who are viewing us. So, Brother James from South Sudan, the, the, there is a very rich history as far as Komboni is concerned with South Sudan. Who are the Komboni brothers? Well, thank you so much, uh, sister. I'm really very privileged to have come from South Sudan. Uh, it's also well known as Delano Komboni, yeah. as most of us know. He Komboni started from Sudan and also he died in Sudan. Mm -hmm. The whole view of Africa, he, he really he felt that these are the people that he want to live with. These yeah. are the people that he want to proclaim uh, the word of God to. And so, he, as we all know that he lived in Sudan and also died in Sudan, 
And so the the word of God, if the word of God is alive today in the Sudan, is because of Sandal Kumbon. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's true that many people they don't know Kumbon brothers. Yeah. But uh, we the Kumbon missionary brothers of the uh, Sacred Heart of Jesus, uh, we are a mixed congregation. Mm -hmm. We have the priest and then the brothers. And then what do the brothers do? Mm -hmm. So the Kumbon brothers. In collaboration with the Komboni priest, they are they live together in the communities. Mm -hmm. Each and every community at least has got a brother and a priest. Mm -hmm. So the roles of the brothers, the brothers they play different roles in their in the communities and different responsibilities. For example, we run schools, mm -hmm. uh, hospitals, and administration. So in the hospital and uh, in the schools. Those ministries are normally run by brothers. Okay. Of course, there are situations whereby maybe due to lack of brothers, you see priests doing it. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, these ministries are given to brothers, and priests they concentrate in their work of uh, evangelization, preaching the word of God, mm -hmm. preparing homilies, and so forth, baptism, and all this kind of thing. As brothers, we are more into social uh, dimension mm -hmm. of, of people. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Brother James. Brother Gislin, mm. how did you come to know uh, the Komboni brothers in Benin? In Benin. <laughs> I, I think it's the first time you are hosting somebody from Benin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how did, how did you come to know the Komboni missionaries uh, from Benin? From Benin. Okay. Thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I was in the north of Benin, Paraku. Mm -hmm. And the north of Benin, in my town, there is no Komboni missionary. Mm -hmm. So it was after the secondary school, I came in the south of um, Benin, Kotonu. Mm -hmm. And there we have some Komboni missionary community. Mm -hmm. And I was in my parish when we received some novice mm -hmm. uh, uh, who came to share about their experience about Komboni. Mm -hmm. So it was through their sharing I encountered this uh, beautiful life of Komboni. Mm -hmm. And now when the desire, because it is a late vocation, mm -hmm. it was in the university that uh, I started feeling the, the call of God. Okay. So when I started mm -hmm. now to descend this vocation and become a Komboni, let us say father, mm -hmm. I realized that in the congregation they have to or branches, mm -hmm. the father and the brothers. Mm -hmm. So I have to decide whether I will be a Komboni father or a Komboni brother. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, during this uh, discernment that I realized that, as uh, James was saying, the brothers, they were mostly in the field of uh, human promotion. Mm -hmm. And taking into account also my background, I'm a social worker. Okay. And I'm always in the mm -hmm. field of uh, social service, uh, mm -hmm. human promotion. Mm -hmm. So for me, leave this uh, uh, beautiful work of social work and now say, uh, become a father mm. and stay in the parish uh, with all those things that we know about the work of father. I realized that I will not feel this joy of the vocation because okay. Okay. All vocations is about the joy. Yeah. If you and are fulfillment at the end, yeah. if you are able to feel this joy, it mm. means that you are at the right place. So, because of that, in the process of the discernment, yeah, I decided to to become a Komboni brother, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy to 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 be a Komboni brother. I started by the postulancy, and then now I'm. Okay. okay, so in short, what inspired you to become a Komboni brother? Is it the same because you are a social worker and you saw them doing it? Or okay. what inspired you what to become a, a What Komboni inspired brother? me yeah, yeah. first is Komboni. Mm -hmm, himself. Komboni. Mm -hmm. And now, after Komboni, there is this uh, will yeah, to, to be with people, and help them in various area, mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. health uh, area, uh, justice and peace. So yeah. Yeah. my will was to be in this field and, mm -hmm. and help people okay. to show them this uh, love of God. Mm -hmm. Because the brother, as in the, 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 the gospel of uh, Matthew, we 
we realize that we are all the son of the same father. Mm -hmm. So what I am able to do with my brother, my bio biological brother, mm -hmm. I must be able to do with any people, either they are from my country or another continent or another country. Mm -hmm. So this will, yeah, to show th that la uh, this love, to spread this love through the, the social service, that is the main, yeah, thing which uh, uh, helped me to, 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 to decide to, to become a Cambodian brother. Okay, thank you, Gislein, brother Gislein. Brother James, the fact that you are from South Sudan, there must be something that, because there are, combined, there are other missionaries uh, who have brothers, but in particular, you decided to be a Komboni brother. What also inspired you to be part of that fraternity? Well, uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, regarding uh, my vocation to brotherhood, yeah. uh, I have no idea about brotherhood mm -hmm. at the beginning, okay. from my parish where I grew up from. Mm -hmm. And uh, when first I started to be uh, inspired, I wanted to be a priest. Mm -hmm. And so I expressed a desire to my parish priest and so forth, to be a diocesan or something like that. Mm -hmm. But there was a complication from the family. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't want, but my mom wants mm -hmm. me to become something like that. So there was mm -hmm. a bit of conflict. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that year I paused, I couldn't go to the, to the seminary, diocesan seminary. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I waited. When I completed high school, again, I started expressing that, and there was a lot of uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Because my parish priest refusing mm -hmm. me to go to the diocese I wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. and so, yes, mm -hmm. I shared with one of my friends, and then he told me, no, oh, but if that's the reason, why can't you be neutral, no? Mm -hmm. Not a diocese son, but maybe you try to the religious life or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy. I knew already Komboni, okay. but uh, because of learning in schools yeah. in, in South Sudan, mm -hmm. uh, it He's is a nice great way. man there. It is. He is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Some components and Joseph Bakita, mm -hmm. we call them our saints, you know. Yeah, they are saints and they are highly uh, celebrated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, having known Komboni in primary school, and so I was really fascinated by that. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, got the contracts of the vocation promoter. So we started talking. Mm -hmm. And so he sent me more materials on Komboni missionaries, mm -hmm. so I was started reading, reading. And so, it's still a desire of becoming a priest was there. Mm -hmm. So when I was admitted to the preposterlands, it's the first stage of our formation, mm -hmm. like to come and see. Mm -hmm. So, I applied as a priest candidate. And so, in the process of the formation, I get to learn about the Komboni brothers. Mm -hmm. And so, during that period, after six months, we have the community experience, we are sent to the missions. To, to see the work of Kombon on the ground, no? mm -hmm. the missionaries. So it is from there that I found brothers okay. concretely on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so there was one brother in the community and four priests. So you could see in the morning, everyone goes for his own duties. The priest goes for the minister and the brother was running for schools. Mm. And I could see the, the enthusiasm in him, the mm. joy, mm -hmm. the, the effort that he's really try, trying to do to mm. help the, uh, the, the people in that uh, uh, region. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was that uh, there was a shortage. Mm -hmm. Although he tries very much, yeah. but there was a shortage somewhere mm -hmm. that he needs help, you know, he needs help. Yeah. And so it is from there that I got the view of Combo Mission and Brothers. And I realize there are very much few. Mm -hmm. They are not like priests, you know. Yeah. These are very many. Okay. And so I started thinking about why can't I also become like a brother, no? Mm -hmm. Instead of a priest. Mm -hmm. Since there are many priests, mm -hmm. you know. So I started really developing that zeal in me to, to say perhaps this is where God is calling me to. To be very much close to people. Yeah. Because priests, they are much in the parishes yeah. and oftentimes, uh, if people don't approach them, mm -hmm. they hardly know the reality of people, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you're a teacher mm -hmm. or you are a nurse or something like that, you are always close to people. Mm -hmm. You visit them, you study them, like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying priests don't do that. They <laughs> do that, but yeah. on certain conditions. Yeah. So that is what really touches me a lot. Mm -hmm. And I say, this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. This is where I want to be. And so from there, I started expressing again to my formator when I went back to the porcelain, mm -hmm. to the pre-porcelain. But then the Countries for brothers have already gone because 
our candidate will start in Uganda, mm -hmm. and the press candidate will come to Nairobi. So my family told me, look, now it is a delay. Why can't you go to the postlands mm -hmm. like that, and then you purify your vocation there? Okay. So I came to Nairobi as a priest candidate. Mm -hmm. And so from there, first year, I was very enthusiastic, studying philosophy and so forth. And uh, second year, I started the zeal again. I started feeling, I said, I think this is not my calling to okay. become a priest. You know? okay. So yeah. I lost completely the motivation of becoming a priest. Mm -hmm. But the motivation of becoming brotherhood is the one that was still burning me. So I shared mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. For two years, we've been journeying talking about that, whether it's a true vocation or not. So after, finally, he, I shared and they accepted. With my provision, I went to the novitiate. I came back as a Komboni brother. So I'm very happy. <laughs> the good, beautiful thing is yeah. that Komboni, whether mm -hmm. you're Komboni priest or brother, you are all together. There's yeah. one thing that unites us. Okay. So it, there's no difference. Okay. All one. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, James. And I am curious to know, how is your dad now? Has he accepted you to be uh, serving as a missionary or is he still thinking about it? <laughs> well, he, yeah. when I completed the post lands, mm -hmm. he, I went home for holiday. And uh, I shared with him. He was. He said, "Look, I already accepted you. Mm -hmm. I allowed you to go to the f to the seminary. Mm -hmm. Go. Okay. If it is really your calling, mm -hmm. God will show it to you. Yeah. If it's not your calling, you come home. I will call you. <laughs> in my mouth. Yeah. There's no problem. So they tell you. us like mm -hmm. that. If you feel it is not to come back home, we exactly. have not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wish you the best in your vocation journey, and it's good." That uh, for those who think that they, they are brothers because they couldn't make to be priests is a personal decision. You have the choices here, either to be a brother or to be a priest. What does your inner desire tell you and go where you feel fulfilled? Uh, Brother Gislin, how yes. about you? Are there, uh, <laughs> there what barriers from your parents about becoming a missionary? Of course, yeah. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it was not easy mm -hmm. because of the family issue. Okay. As I said, it is a late vocation. I mm -hmm. was in university. Mm -hmm. They were expecting me to come to out and yeah. start bringing Even money. Even after the university, <laughs> I went mm -hmm. to work in the psychiatry hospital for two years. Mm -hmm. So when the the desire were becoming strong, mm -hmm. I remember even to I remember that. I even uh, informed my father through a letter. I didn't even have <laughs> this uh, courage to, to, to call face him. him. Okay. Yeah, because I know mm -hmm. his behavior. Mm. So I wrote a letter and I sent him. He, he didn't uh, refuse, mm -hmm. but I could, I, could, uh, I could see how through his comment in mm -hmm. the family, uh, you can see that he's not really okay. Mm -hmm. My mother, she's very happy mm -hmm. with that uh, choice yeah. and she always uh, pray, pray for me mm -hmm. and even my dad mm. when i went for uh, holy day in 2022 i can see how he is also happy to have a religious also in his family okay we thank yeah. god for your parents <laughs> and uh, we pray for them with yeah. the time they will come to understand they are not the only one uh, it is not an easy thing to uh, for them to accept for us to mm. be in this life. Uh, when on they, they, they think like mm, they are getting lost, yeah. but with time yeah. they come to realize what we are doing in the service of the vineyard of the Lord. Uh, Brother Gislin, when somebody look at uh, the brothers, he might wonder what kind of, how, how is the, the life of a brother from morning to evening? What do they do? How, how is it, their life? Okay. Yeah. The, the life of brothers are um, almost the same with any religious, mm -hmm. only that we have our particularity. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, we have our morning prayer, mm -hmm. we have the daily mass, we have the meditation as the Komboni Father, mm -hmm. one hour. Mm -hmm. It could be in the morning or in the evening, according to your own timetable. Mm -hmm. And then we have the, the, the time of ministry, the, the service that you are under in the, in the province or in the country. Mm -hmm. So you go to, to, to serve people mm -hmm. according to your background mm -hmm. study or according to the needs of the local church. Mm -hmm. And then we have the community uh, gathering, it could be uh, social evening, it could be community prayer. Mm -hmm. So we have all those um, 
community prayer that a religious is supposed to do mm -hmm. every day, morning, evening, night prayer. So, mm -hmm. in short, that is the, the, what I could say about the life of uh, a brother in a day. Yeah. Thank you. That's their life. Uh, and Brother James, somebody would wonder, how, how do you integrate prayer life and uh, the apostolate? Because sometimes maybe people may be seeing the brother is very busy in the school. How, how, how are you able as a brother to make sure that you integrate and uh, you have balance as far as your life is concerned as a brother? Well, uh, thank you, sister. Mm -hmm. It is true that sometimes one gets lost yeah. looking at the, the ministry, the services that we do. Yeah. And, but our rule of life is very clear. For, mm -hmm. for instance, we have the personal prayer mm -hmm. and then we have the community prayer. Yeah. So, first of all, you need to, to, to keep these two, the personal prayer and the community prayer. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the apostolate, as mm -hmm. you say. Yeah. So, how are we supposed to do? What, we have one hour, at least one hour, this is what our rule of law is, at least one hour personal prayer mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. and then we have the community prayers. Yeah. So uh, what we do is to make sure, each and every one, you make sure you organize your time to pray, mm -hmm. this one hour prayer, mm -hmm. and also not to forget the community, because it is a community that holds us together. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do whatever, everything that you do, good things outside, but if you, don't, you are not able to keep the values of the community, you are not able to keep the communion with their brothers in the community, mm -hmm. that, that's not right. So what we do is, each and every brother at least will make sure that today I've said my one hour prayer, mm -hmm. regardless of the, the, the business that yeah. you are or something like that, yeah. at least you find time, mm -hmm. at least you find time. So for us, the possibility is there to find time. Mm -hmm. Could be during the, the, the break or whatever, mm -hmm. we do it. Okay, yeah, we okay, do it. okay. And of course, to after doing everything, you rush thinking also knowing that behind we have a community. I have my brothers behind, mm -hmm. so also to join them afterward for evening prayer or morning prayer. Okay, like okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's possible to work it and is. pray. Mm -hmm. You you balance your life. It's possible. Maybe there are those who are maybe even who are watching us. Uh, the lay people they wonder how do the religious manage to pray and at the same time they live their life and at the same time they are busy working but it is possible you just need to organize yourself have time for god imagine he has given us 24 hours per day give him 10 percent of of the 24 hours <laughs> and it is possible the the 10 percent of you calculate how many hours should you give to God? It's possible uh, because if we can be able to sit down and watch a movie for three, four hours, why not have some time to be with God in prayer? It's possible. So you are watching uh, Missions of Hope with I, Sister Esther Moturi. And in the studio today, for those who are just watching us, us from now, we have the Komboni brothers represented by Brother James Lane and Brother James. Do not go away because when we come back we are getting to know more about the Komboni brothers. Much we have heard about the Komboni fathers, now we are knowing who are these Komboni fathers. Do not go away. <laughs> My name is David Mokaru, CEO of Caritas Microfinance Bank. We have a message from the board, management and staff of Caritas Microfinance Bank. We wish to congratulate Right Reverend Simon Peter Kamomoe and Right Reverend Wallace Nganga on your episcopate appointment and ordination as auxiliary bishops of the Metropolitan uh, Archdiocese of Nairobi. This is a momentous occasion. 
not only for you, but also to the entire metropolitan community, you will serve. Your dedication, wisdom, and faith have brought you to this esteemed position. And we have no doubt that you lead with grace and compassion. As you embark on your Episcopal journey, may you find strength in your faith, wisdom in your decisions, and courage in your challenges. Your leadership will undoubtedly inspire others and guide them towards spiritual growth and fulfillment. Caritas Microfinance Bank family sends its heartfelt support and prayers as you undertake this sacred responsibility. May God bless you abundantly as you shepherd this flock with love and humility. Pamoja Marisha Jami. Welcome back, dear viewer. Before we went, I said, Komboni fathers. It is Komboni brothers. <laughs> and, and when we were behind the camera, there is something that Brother James was telling me, and I want him to talk about the Komboni brothers. Semaki, you say what you are telling me <laughs> about the Komboni brothers, please. Yes, <laughs> yeah. in, so, in, from the beginning of our uh, foundation, when we were founded, mm -hmm. uh, Komboni himself dedicated the brothers to St. Joseph, mm -hmm. the worker. Okay. Now, we looked, into we looked to up to St. Joseph mm -hmm. as our patron saint, and we celebrate him every year. Mm -hmm. So, just like St. Uh, Joseph, most of the brothers they are not known. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, many people been, did they know Kumboni has got brothers. Yeah, you know? yeah. But we are there. Yeah. We are there, but we work in silence. Mm -hmm. Of course, not, uh, if you're not keen, you will not realize. Because of our simplicity, our way mm -hmm. of life, yeah. the way we live, mm -hmm. uh, and it is something that uh, uh, that attracts a lot of young people with that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And even when I was talking about the one-hour prayer, in silence, as a brother, even in the workshop, if you are in charge of workshop mm -hmm. or in the school, mm -hmm. in contemplation, mm -hmm. because we do work and contemplation. Yeah. That is the most uh, the central part of our life. Mm -hmm. To work while contemplating, mm -hmm. and so when you work while contemplating, you you you, you do a good service, you know, mm -hmm. you do a good service. And so as our lives as component, and components to talk about us being like stones mm -hmm. that are buried underground. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be parading yourself to yeah. be seen or something like that. But in silence, mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, we see this building, but we don't know what is holding this building. These are rocks. Sure, you know? sure. These are uh, stones, mm -hmm. things that holds the, the, the house. So we say, you should be like that. Let people see the work that you are doing. Mm -hmm. but let people not see you, you know. Let people not see. So in silence, we are there. Okay. We are there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, like St. Joseph, he did a lot, but uh, very little is, is all about St. Joseph, but as the scholars continue to learn who was Joseph and what was he doing, they have come to realize the enormous responsibility that Joseph had in the life of Jesus and Mary. So like he's saying, they are working in silence, but doing great things. This program is Missions of Hope, Brother Gislin. And uh, maybe I would wish to know, what are some of the significant moments or experience that made you reaffirm your commitment to the Komboni way of life and as far as the mission is concerned in giving hope, especially as you said that you are a social trained person, what is that uh, that one experience or two that made you feel mm, this is my way of life and I am happy that I'm offering hope to the people of God? Okay, thank you, sister. Yeah. Yeah, about uh, the, the past experience, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, uh, 
I was uh, also working in the psychiatry hospital. Mm -hmm. I did some experience which was very, which were very uh, beautiful for me. Mm -hmm. And we were many in the in the, in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the the doctor, the social assistant or worker. Mm -hmm. We have the nurse. We have even we were even three social workers in the hospital. Mm -hmm. But my particular way to, to deal with the, the patient, um, allow some of the, the, my colleagues mm -hmm. to, to, to ask me if this patient, for example, is one of my family, is a relative, is one of my relatives. Mm -hmm. Because they, see, they saw how I was uh, very close to that person, even though most of them were abandoned by their family, they mm -hmm. don't know even Mm -hmm. The way to because the the the, the mental uh, sickness is very uh, very terrible. Yeah. So be close to those abandoned uh, patient. Uh, they 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 realize that there is a different way to do the social work in mm -hmm. the hospital compared to the other social workers. So they were asking me, mm -hmm. this patient is a, is one of your relative. Mm -hmm. That helped me to to realize that. The brotherhood is very beautiful. You mm -hmm. are able to, to serve anybody as mm -hmm. your own brother. Mm -hmm. Another experience was uh, wa with one of my patients also. The way that I was defending the case mm -hmm. uh, pushed some of the, 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 the worker to, to intimidate me, mm -hmm. to intimidate me. Mm -hmm. But since I was uh, focused on what I was doing, Later on, they, they came to realize that you know, I was looking for the, the good of the, the patient, not the, 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 the good of those social uh, those or colleagues mm -hmm. who like to, for example, instead to give the medicine to the patient, mm -hmm. they prefer to keep it in their office and sell it very expensive. Mm -hmm. So later on, they realized the, the impact of what I was doing, mm -hmm. and later on, we become very close to each other. Okay. So those experiences mm -hmm. helped me to, 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 to love more this choice of brotherhood mm -hmm. and mainly the Comboni brother mm -hmm. who, are, who is able, the brother who is able to, to work in the tough situation mm -hmm. and who, who doesn't give up mm -hmm. in front of difficulties, in front of uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, brother, brother James. Uh, I know there are different missions that you carry out uh, as Komboni brothers. Maybe you could highlight some of these uh, missions that uh, you carry out that offer hopes. And at the same time, do you also have an experience that uh, really touched you? You can still remember and say, mm -hmm, I think I made the right choice to be a Komboni brother. Yes, uh, mm. we have different missions. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we said in the beginning, we have we run the, the schools, mm -hmm. uh, high schools, primary school, colleges, and then we have also technical uh, institutes mm -hmm. where we train young people. Uh, those mostly with the less privileged, you know, mm -hmm. those who cannot afford uh, uh, to go to maybe other private schools or other universities, mm -hmm. but we train them with the excellent skills. And so it is from there that we meet the people, mm -hmm. also in the hospitals. <coughs> we have nurses, we have doctors. Uh, in media, also we're there, oh, and then okay. uh, social work. Uh -huh. we're there. You remember we the incident of social transformation in Tangaza. Oh, so there okay. we also have a brother who okay. is running the, that program. Mm -hmm. And so this is our ministries particularly. Mm -hmm. This is where we meet the people. Mm -hmm. That is where we stay with people. Mm -hmm. And so it is through there that you get to interact with young people. You get to listen to them. You get to 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 know their stories. Uh, to me, that is the most significant uh, way of uh, meeting the young people. Mm -hmm. Because through that, we meet. Also, apostolate mm -hmm. uh, into the, in the parishes, we, we, do, we, we go in administration. Mm -hmm. These are our ministries that we do. Mm -hmm. So, the particular experience that uh, personally, I have not yet gone to a mission yeah. uh, because I'm still in the formation. But time to time, we go for mission, yeah. uh, community experiences. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it is the beginning of mission. Mm. Yeah, it's the beginning of mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, up to now, uh, I met so beautiful, so many beautiful experiences mm -hmm. uh, encountering people. 
uh, at the moment I work, uh, I go to Karibangi for my community experience, mm -hmm. I mean for my apostolate. Okay. And there I'm with the young people, the youth mm -hmm. and so forth, we interact, we share with them. Mm -hmm. The same thing when I was in Zambia, the, in the parish, mm -hmm. running in the, in the center, we have there for the vocational promotion. That is where I uh, really enjoy very much, mm -hmm. interacting with the young people, sharing with them, teaching them. Mm -hmm. So it is something that reaffirmed really my vocation, saying this is where you belong. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have not, up to now I have not regretted at least. Mm -hmm. I still find my joys mm -hmm. in such ministries and I'm happy for that. Okay. What, what would you need to require? What, would you, what is one required to have in order to convince the young people? Because <laughs> sometimes they are not ready to open, to open up, especially men. Maybe now that you have dealt with the youth and uh, in your short life that you have been with them, what have you come to realize as one of the things that you need to have in order for the young people to be open to you and ready to share their experiences? Well, uh, as you said, mm -hmm. it's true. It's mm -hmm. true, sister, because yeah. from my experience, yeah. men and mm -hmm. boys, they yeah. are uh, a bit reserved, uh, the, the reservative, no? Yeah. They will not, they are not very much open to mm -hmm. share their experiences, but mm -hmm. unlike the, the, the female, the ladies, the yeah. women, yeah. they are very much open to share with that. Mm. And, uh, what I realize that is needed really is patience, as brother said, mm. and also to live an example at life. Yeah. You know, to live mm. an example. You don't say what you don't live. Yeah. You know? Let them also see what you live, mm -hmm. and in order for them to trust you, you know, yeah. because trust is like that. And when you're able also to keep the the, the secrets, the, whatever they share with you, mm -hmm. you keep it confidential, no? Mm -hmm. So, to me, I see it as a way that young people tr will trust you, you know, yeah. in, in order to work with them. So, first to live an example of life, and that prayer you would put life, you know. Mm -hmm. See that this person is also uh, worth shared with, you know, mm -hmm. share with or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, to me, these are the, the most important things. Thank you, Brother James. Brother Gisling, mm -hmm. you know, I understand that when you go to the psychiatrist places, those people who are, the, it's like the, the, the nini is not very well, they think you are the one who is mad. <laughs> and you are able to deal with them and to stay with them. On the same note about the confidence and the young people trusting in you and much that you have been trained on that area of social, what can you add on what James has said? Okay, thank yeah. you, sister. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the first encounter is very important. Yeah. If you miss the first encounter, uh, they will never trust you. Mm -hmm. And the way that you you consider that them as a human being. Mm -hmm. I remember some of our patients, they were, able, they were able to share some of their experience with me, mm -hmm. that they were not, ha but they were, they were not having this courage to share the same experience with the other doctor in the, in the hospital, mm -hmm. because they realized that I was considering yeah, mm -hmm. their, their situation, mm -hmm. I was able to understand them, mm -hmm. I was very patient with them. One, for example, was uh, put in a, we have some of the, the our room, mm. when they are very aggressive, when they are very aggressive, we have to close them to lock the, the, the room. Yeah. But I was able to, to communicate with some of them and even bring some of them in my office to mm -hmm. stay with me and when mm. it's time now to, to leave the hospital, we, they can go back to, into their, mm -hmm. to their room. So it helped them to trust me mm -hmm and later on share some of the experience that they were going through mm -hmm. and that uh, experience helped me and helped also the center to know how to deal with their, their issues. So the first encounter is very important mm -hmm. and the way that you, you treat them as a human being. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. It's all a matter of trust and uh, all those who are involved in carrying out social work, uh, social ministry, uh, the first impression, very important. How do you handle those people that you are dealing with? Much as you are going to give them hope. Do you have hope yourself? That is the most important thing to uh, what I'm getting from our brothers here in the studio. Uh, the Komboni missionaries are celebrating uh, 50 years of their existence and particularly in Kenya. The Komboni brothers is the same. 
It's the same year you are celebrating. <laughs> so we are one. We are one. So yeah. it will start at the same time. Okay. Sure. Now, what do you have to say about uh, your, your presence in Kenya and uh, maybe your elder brother sort of they said how was the journey? How, how is it even now as you serve today as Komboni missionaries? Well, so sister, thank mm -hmm. you so much. When you say like that, it's like we are separate. No, we are uh, one. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, they are one. Yes. When <laughs> yes. we come to, for yeah. example, when we are assigned in the diocese, yes, we go as combined missionaries. Yes. So there's not like brothers or something. So we are mm -hmm. combined missionaries, and it is from the community that we know that this is a brother, okay. and the brother you you do this role, mm -hmm. the priest you do this role. We are together, okay. so we are one. Okay. So I think you have done well. That's why people <laughs> are not able to differentiate whether there was combined brothers and combined. Yeah, we know they are combined priests, but people had not realized. <laughs> it is true. Yeah. So yes. I think you are doing it very well. You are yes. one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So a uh, uh, presence in Kenya, mm. uh, as we uh, this year, last year actually, up to now we are still celebrating yeah. the 50 years mm. of our existence here in Kenya. Mm. Uh, I would say that we did great. Mm -hmm. We did great and mm. we thank God for that. Uh, it is through the work of God. Of course, it has not been easy. Yeah. And knowing very well, I don't know, our brothers might have shared those who have come yeah, here yeah. about mm. who combined are. Yeah. The nature of our mission the situation we work in, it is not easy. Yeah. It is a little bit tough. Yeah. And when we celebrate something like 50 years, mm. it is really amazing. Yeah. And we give God thanks because mm. many have given their lives yeah. for the mission. Mm. So, uh, knowing very well the work of Combon missionaries, uh, there are so many parishes that we have left. Yeah. I've been developed the place, the the, the small Christian communities and so forth, when the parish is self-sufficient, mm. we leave. Mm. So we go further, where the word of God has never reached, you know. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More people, uh, the diocese is not able to reduce to some situation or something, yeah. so there we go. Mm. So uh, through that, we are able to, to leave other parishes, other communities, and also one of our services like is school education mm -hmm. to make sure that also we educate the, the, the local community around, give the other services like with schools, hospitals. So these are other services that we do mm -hmm. up to now mm -hmm. in Turkana, mm -hmm. in Amakure, Pokot. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the services that we do and people appreciate mm -hmm. up to now and they are very happy with their presence there. I think these are other few uh, things that I can comment about. Mm -hmm. And brother, Gisele brother, Gisele, you can add something about the, your presence. Fifty years is not a short time yeah. of your presence in Kenya, and uh, I the impact, as he has said, is there. And maybe you can add for those who are watching us. Maybe it's their first time to hear about the Komboni brothers. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, fifty years of the presence of Komboni missionary here in Kenya. They have. Uh, they, they did a lot, they did a lot, mm -hmm. even though I was not uh, around when yeah. I came here, mm -hmm. when you visit some, uh, some of the communities, some parishes, and you hear what people are saying about the company missionary, you can realize that they, they did a lot. There are some of the parishes that they, 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 they were running, mm -hmm. but today, they they leave it to the to the to the diocese, mm -hmm. which means that oh, the, the 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 mission is growing. Mm -hmm. And if you see some of the 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 social area that they were they were working in, some of the area like uh, Masabit, uh, Turukana, mm -hmm. you could see that yeah they are very close to people and mm -hmm. they. They, they, they are always there to work for their good, work also in the field of uh, social, uh, justice and peace. Mm -hmm. That's uh, mm -hmm. some of the things which help people, which help the society to have a, 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 a transformative uh, 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 citizen. Mm -hmm. And I can see that one in, in many areas here in Kenya, mm -hmm. even with the social transformation school that we have here at Tangaza, you mm -hmm. can see how they are really helping the, 
the, the citizens of Kenya mm -hmm. to, to transform their society, to transform their country. So, mm -hmm. to, of course, it's not enough, but mm -hmm. they have to, to keep that uh, good thing that they are doing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, brothers. And uh, maybe there is a young man who is watching us and he feels like now, like James or Jaslyn, I am attracted to become a Komboni brother. What should one have? Uh, or what are the qualifications, sorry? Well, uh, mm. just like any other uh, uh, religious congregation, mm -hmm. of course, you should be a Catholic, but yeah. you're more baptized yeah. and confirmed. Yeah. That is one of our requirements. And at least you should have finished high school mm -hmm. in order to be admitted mm -hmm. uh, to the with good results also. Yeah. Uh, to, to be admitted to the university. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, these are the and to be accepted by your parents to say yes, <laughs> you want our son to go to the, the <laughs> same yeah, okay. uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to, to join. Okay. So these are our, the, the other requirements that uh, are needed. And of course, to be ready also to leave your country. Mm -hmm. uh, as a Kumbon mission, often time, most of our time we spend out, uh, out of our, our countries. Mm -hmm. And for example, you have like three years outside, and then you go home for three months. Mm. So to accept that reality mm -hmm. that you will not be in your country, you will be outside the country, always outside, and also to, to be to face the challenges mm -hmm. like language, for okay. example. Okay. You learn the language of the local people, the local language first of all, and the international language that the, 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 the official languages that we speak that yeah. we speak the different countries. Okay. So these are the, the things, but of course it's challenging, mm -hmm. but also it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful and yeah. Right Thank you. What I can say. And our stages mm. of formation, we have the preposalans. Yeah. You first aspire, yeah. then you become preposalans, mm -hmm. one year. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the porcelains, three years mm -hmm. or four years, depending. Then you go to the novitiate. Mm -hmm. So in the novitiate, uh, that's why you become a combined missionary. Okay. Because the porcelains you are prepared could be whatever field that you want to do, mm -hmm. technical, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So from there, Postulans, Novice, mm -hmm. from Novice you go to International Brother Center where you meet different brothers from different countries, mm -hmm. different continents, you're together, mm -hmm. and then from there you go to the missions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, brothers. Your closing mm -hmm. remark, we are coming to the end of our program. Okay, just mm -hmm. to thank you, sister, mm -hmm. and to thank also this channel of uh, Capuchin mm -hmm. TV yeah. for the great work that you are doing here. Mm -hmm. That is also another way to preach also the, the, the good news, mm -hmm. to, to help people also to be aware about the challenges and also the achievements of our church here yeah. in Kenya. Yeah. And thank also our formators who allow us to come here to share our experience. Maybe the last thing is, mm -hmm. if uh, someone would like to know more about Kumbuni Brothers, mm -hmm. there is a, the latest issue of uh, New People Media Center, mm -hmm. where I have this opportunity to share my mm -hmm. experience. Okay. It will help them also to understand more about this <coughs> journey. Mm -hmm. And we have also the contact of the vocation uh, could you promoter. you hold it again up for the viewers to see it? Mm -hmm. And we have the, mm. the, the, the number of mm. the vocation promoter of mm. Kenya, mm. Uganda, mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. so they can easily uh, uh, write to them mm -hmm. about their will to join the okay. mission. Thank you. Is there a again. number you can shout out for somebody to contact you later? If <laughs> <laughs> or social media, if you don't have, they will. I think one time Father John ca uh, gave out his number. So if you want to follow the Combon missionaries, we have had some subsequent program about the Combon mission, and we shall continue to have them uh, in the studio every month until we get to know who they are. Uh, Brother James, yes. you are concluding <laughs> remark because time is well, <laughs> chasing us. <laughs> yeah. Thank you sister mm -hmm. for hosting us and mm -hmm. also all your staffs yeah. and also our viewers, our listeners. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for giving this time to listen to us. We appreciate and yeah, we are looking forward also to 
for coming here next time. Mm -hmm. And we are very grateful. Thank Thanks you. so much. You are welcome. Thank you very much, dear viewer. Those who are brothers, the Komboni brothers, if you didn't know that they are Komboni brothers, now you know. We were in the studio with Brother James and Brother Jisling from the Komboni brothers, uh, the larger Komboni missionaries who are celebrating their 50 years of the their existence and presence in Kenya. And on behalf of the technical bench, all those who have allowed this program to come to you and reach you, for you to understand and to know about the Komboni brothers, it has been I, Sister Esther Muturi. Until next Tuesday, it is bye for now. God bless you.